I know one of the most frustrating things when you're learning to use a sewing machine or a beginner sewer or you know what, even a more experienced sewer still uh, encounters this problem from time to time. And that is when you start sewing and you end up with this huge, giant, nasty, just thread nesting. It's like a little bird's nest under there. This is what we call thread jam. This is the most frustrating thing because as you're a beginner sewer, you just think, why is this happening? So let's uh, solve this for you. In this video, I'm going to talk about the top 10 things that you should try to fix your thread jamming so that you can just get on with your sewing. Welcome my lovely ladies and gents. My name is Evelyn Wood and I'm the founder of VintageSewingSchool.com and as a lifelong dressmaker and head sewing teacher at Vintage Sewing School, I have encountered a lot of thread jamming and this horrible bird's nesting uh, that was entailed. Uh, as I make this video, we are currently in the middle of the uh, COVID-19 uh, quarantine lockdown. So everybody is stay at home and hopefully stay at home and sew. I have found that my videos on thread jamming and uh, beginner sewing tips have just skyrocketed. Maybe you're picking up the machine uh, for the very first time, or maybe it's the first time in a long time that you've pulled out your machine and you're starting to sew. And you come up with this issue, uh, this, this horrible thread jamming. So in my experience, there are generally Unfortunately, there's no one problem. It is a, could be anything. And it is basically a process of elimination. And so I say, try these things in this order. So let's just clarify thread jamming. So this means this horrible big ball of nested threads, right? This is thread jam. This is what we're talking about. If your machine is sewing and it sews, but it just looks messy, that is more likely to be a thread tension issue and that is separate. So you'll need to look for a thread tension for that particular problem. We're going to solve this uh, thread nesting, this jamming issue. The number one reason why when you're sewing that you'll get this thread jamming is actually operator error. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunately it's not really what you want to hear, but on the plus side, it's the easiest one to fix. Now, there are three main uh, reasons in operator error that I'm just bundling up into one here. So the reason is that uh, you're not either holding onto the threads when you start sewing. So as the mach machine starts going, it draws these threads back in. And if you cut off the little ends too small, it'll it'll ruin it for you. So you actually need to keep a bit of length to them and you actually need to hold them. So there's the two reasons. So hold on to them and you need some length. The sec the third one is that you don't need to start right at the tippy tippy end of the fabric. It can cause the threads to go in down into the bobbin and cause this horrible nonsense. Now I have actually made a video on this already and so I would recommend that you go watch that one because it's more in depth on these issues and how you can fix this first up. So please, if you haven't already, that is, go watch that one for the operator error issues. If you're doing all these things right, then you really need to just re-thread your top thread. So quite often uh, the thread is not actually inside these tension discs properly and it can cause all sorts of trouble. It's very mathematically all calculated, worked out, this piece of machinery. So try your top thread. If that doesn't work, you've tried re-threading it and it's still not working, then retry your bobbin. So pull the bo whole bobbin out and put it the case, put it all back in and try that. The next thing to try is to try a new needle. You'll be really surprised at how much a blunt needle can cause you so many stitching problems. So just uh, change your needle and put in a new one. If you're interested in needle sizes and what to choose for what fabrics, I have actually made another video all about needle sizes and I'll link that down below so you can go watch that one after this one, of course. Next, try sewing on plain cotton fabric. So just a plain quilting cotton, no stretch, no nothing. If you're trying other fabrics that is already, just try it on a really plain, easy sew fabric, just to make sure that it's not the fabric that you're using that is uh, causing the issue. Uh, and then you'll know whether you need to, if it is, you'll need to adjust your sort of tension, pressure foot, thread, all that sort of stuff, things to uh, 
for the fabric that you're sewing. So just try the plain old sort of like ground zero fabric. Uh, try it to make sure if it sews on that or if you're still having issues. If you're still having issues, next try cleaning your machine. Uh, you'll be really surprised at how much a dirty fluffy uh, machine in underneath can cause all of this. So you'll need to actually uh, pull out your bobbin, pull out the case, take off this metal plate and pull it all up and clean in and defluff. You'll be really surprised. I dare you, I dare you to uh, post a picture of the, how uh, much fluff is maybe in your machine. If you have never done this before, now is definitely the time to do it. But try just cleaning your machine, defluffing that bobbin area because often for me, even that is just, that's all that is the problem that you need to do. So do clean uh, that machine. If it's a brand new machine, you might not have that issue, but it's still nice to know that you can do that and you should try anyway. Failing those two things. Next thing to try is to try new thread. So sometimes maybe you've picked up an old spool of thread, maybe you've accidentally picked up top stitching thread and not realized because who knows the difference when you're starting. It's hard, trust me. So try new thread. That means both in your top and rewind another bobbin with new different thread. So try that as your next port of call. Next thing, double check you actually have the right bobbin for your machine in here. So we're starting to get to the tail end now. Uh, these are small little things that um, can do, maybe you've just picked up the machine and it's been sitting in the cupboard for who knows how long. Maybe you've just bought new, new packs of bobbins, but each of these little bobbins, uh, maybe you're using a metal one where it should be a plastic one. Metal doesn't necessarily mean better. Each machine is designed with a certain specific size and weight and everything in mind. So it needs to be the right bobbin for the machine. So I would double check that you do actually indeed have the right one for your machine. Still having problems? Well, I suggest walking away, taking a breather and coming back and trying again later. When you're at this point, I know you're super frustrated, nothing's working. You're just getting crankier and crankier. So just, just walk away, take a breather, take an hour to come back the next day, and then just maybe try this, uh, try this checklist again to see if fresh eyes, a fresh, fresh mind can perhaps maybe uh, fix the issue for you. If you're still having issues when you come back and try it again, then unfortunately we've really reached the limit of what you can do at home. And just like your car, you probably, you, you shouldn't just pull things apart and start tinkering uh, and, and trying to figure it out. You really need to take it into a professional and have it serviced. So what it could be, often maybe you've uh, run into a pin and you've broken a needle, often that can actually, the pressure of that can bend all of your bits and pieces up, up the top here and bend it out of alignment. And so when your needle's coming down, it's not properly uh, winding around the bobbin anymore and catching the thread. That can happen very, very, so that's very common. Just something has gone out of alignment in there and it's just not working properly. The tension discs maybe just uh, need to be pulled apart and cleaned, who knows? As I said, we are beyond the limit. So take it in, get it serviced, let the professionals do their thing. They will make it spick and span, all nice and perfect for you to keep on sewing with. I have links below to all of those videos that I think that you might really want to watch and will really help you out as a beginner sewer. And if you're really interested in going deep and really learning how to sew and to understand your machine and all the things involved with sewing, I would invite you to come join me at vintagesewingschool.com where you can actually take a free class all about your machine. It will really, really give you, I think, a lot of insight for those brand new sewers as well. And of course, if you like that, that is but the tip of the iceberg. Come join us as a member of Vintage Sewing School and I can really, really take you down the sewing rabbit hole, so to say. Let me know in the comments below which of these problems was your problem that you needed to fix. Let me know. Uh, it always helps everybody else as well to find out those answers. And of course, if you have any extras that you want to add, let us know down in the comments so we can all learn, share them with our community that we have here. Thank you so very much for watching and hopefully happy sewing. <laughs> Bye. So I can confirm that trying to make this horrible thread lock on my machine, I have now have to take off the metal plate and clean the entire thing now because I have thread stuck in there.
if you do have any thread stuck in there, make sure every single little bit is out. That's an extra tip. Number tip 11, get all the threads out, which I now have to do.